Hey, welcome to the Glengower Podcast, the best podcast you'll listen to all day. Sponsored by Mission Blueprint. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. It's always great to be with you. Uh, those of you all around the country still listening to me. It's crazy to me. So I'm in studio here today, um, and I want to talk about the power of the Holy Spirit, i.e. that God is alive. When I was a kid and growing up, I thought the, the Bible was sort of a myth, a story that um, we were taught as, as Christians or as Catholics growing up, and, and it was way back there, tucked away 2,000 years ago, and it didn't have an impact on my life in 1980. As I grew older, I started to wrestle with this idea of God being real. Now, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> I grew up a Roman Catholic, and um, I liked going to church. I, uh, there were times when my mom would take me to exposition on Sunday uh, at Holy Cross Catholic Church in Ipswich, and I'd spend time there, and I loved it. But I still didn't know the person of Jesus Christ very well and didn't even know that I had an opportunity to know him. So after a really several years of partying and getting into somewhat of a hedonistic lifestyle, um, I realized that there has to be something more to this life. And I began the search for the truth. So I joined the Army National Guard back in the um, fall of 1987, and um, I was destined to go to basic training in June of 1988. So that summer of 1988, I spent at Lawton, um, in Lawton, Oklahoma, at Fort Sill. During that time, I began to really wrestle with this idea of, is God real or not? Well, he started speaking to me. <laughs> it's the craziest thing. Now, what do I mean that God is speaking to me? I mean that um, these thoughts would come into my head. And I don't know where these thoughts would come from, but these thoughts would come into my head, and it was God. Now, did I know that at the time? That it was God, the Holy Spirit, speaking to me? No, I just thought these thoughts were coming into my head. Well, as time went on, I decided to make a retreat. Now, the retreat was called Search for Christian Maturity, and that was in Aberdeen, South Dakota. I made this retreat searching for, um, needed to know that if God was real or not. I was searching for God, really, but I wanted to know intellectually. Is there a God? On the retreat, we heard talk after talk and testimony after testimony testifying that God is real and God is alive. Now, my intellect decided to, to grasp on to that. There was too much data, too much information. Um, and my heart wanted to know more, but I still didn't know him very well. So for several months, I was kicking the tires of, well, what do I do with this information? God is alive. I don't know him very well. What do I do with this information? And then the thought came into my mind, surrender your whole life to Jesus. Well, <laughs> can you do that? And what does that even look like? And how do I do that? And so uh, going on over 12 months, uh, I decided at this same retreat, uh, program, different retreat, that I would give my entire life to the person of Jesus Christ. What did I have to lose? Because I tried so many things before this. So I did. Lit a candle, and I gave my entire life to the person of Christ. Well, two months later, I got into the biggest pit of sin that I have ever been. And then you, <laughs> you wonder, how in the world does this happen? I give my life to the person of Christ, and all of a sudden, uh, I'm back partying again into this terrible party scene. Well, that morning after, I was sitting in my chair and looking at my wall and contemplating how this all happened. How do I give my life to Christ and get in this position? Then God spoke to me again, and he said, through a thought, you don't have the power to live a Christian life. And boy, was that true. So about three weeks later, on March 25th, 1990, three people prayed, laid hands on me and prayed over me. And during that prayer experience, I gave God permission to do whatever he wanted to me. And boy, did he. It was incredible. 
the two things that I remember most is I couldn't believe how much God loved me and I couldn't believe how much peace he gave me. Well, after that experience, several things started to happen. And I didn't know what to do with this. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, God was moving. Here's one example. I was working for the Department of Transportation, seasonal job. And I was talking to God, the Holy Spirit. And I said, you know, I really love that song by John Lennon. Imagine. Could you put that on the radio? And 10 seconds later, the um, disc jockey would say, and now by John Lennon, imagine. About two weeks later, same scenario. I was uh, working um, uh, south of my hometown and, and I thought, boy, I really like that song by U2, Pride in the Name of Love. I said, Lord, could you put that on the radio for me? A minute later, same thing. The DJ comes on and says, and now U2 sings Pride in the Name of Love. Experiences like this kept happening over and over and over. God was loving me and he was speaking to me and showing me that he cares about me and that he hears everything I um, say. Eventually, I made my way back to that same search uh, retreat and search program. And I noticed a, uh, a gal that was stumbling along. There was something wrong with her knee or her leg. And so um, her name was Melissa. And so I said, so what's wrong? Why are you limping? She said, well, you know, I've always had um, some hip problems and one leg has always been shorter than the other. And, and so um, I have to get, get special shoes uh, in order to walk balanced. And so this guy by the name of Dan said, hey, how about we pray with you? Can we pray that God would heal your leg? And she said, well, I, I, I guess that would be okay. So she sat down on a chair and, and you know, Dan really did the leading, uh, but I was praying as well. He lifted her feet up and said, in the name of Jesus, grow. Well, I was also praying with my hands open like this. And I was paying attention to see if anything would happen. I mean, is her leg going to grow? Sure enough, I watched her leg grow an inch and a half, maybe two inches. As soon as that happened, there was this penetrating joy in my heart that I've never experienced before. And the second thing that happened was, oh my, all those things Jesus did, I knew in my intellect that he did it, but also in my heart, because it was that same spirit that was moving through Dan and me healing Melissa. Later on, I was on this other retreat, and I was leading um, about 40 people. And this other part of the retreat um, was really cool because we did lots of praying, lots of fasting. And people would give talks, and we would pray over them, and um, so all weekend long, we were praying, fasting, and praying over people giving talks. Well, near the end of the weekend, I said, you know, we've been praying with speakers all weekend long. I'm curious, does any of you, do any of you want us to lay hands and pray? Well, I got a hand right away and said, yeah, my jaw um, has been hurting. And could you guys lay hands on my jaw and pray that God heals it? And so we did. We uh, laid hands on uh, this young woman. I think her name was Kim. This is 25, 30 years ago. And the most incredible thing happened. The, sp the Spirit of God just sort of fell on the whole group. And I s experienced it right away. Her jaw was healed immediately. And then said, someone said, yeah, could you guys pray over my back? Sure. And so we prayed over this gentleman's back well another jaw we prayed over another jaw and then this poor young woman um she had lost her like grandpa her aunt and her uncle all within a month and she was really close to them and she asked for peace could we pray that she would find some peace because she's really angry and so we did we prayed for peace for this young woman and it was really amazing. So I asked everyone on the retreat, sit down. 
because the spirit of God was moving so much. I had to explain what was going on. So everybody sat down and they went through the Pentecost narrative, how the Holy spirit fell on the disciples and moved and they were changed. Well, that same spirit fell on us in a similar way. No tongues of fire. That would be cool. And that's exactly what was happening. I'll never forget. I, after that night, the next morning, I was walking with a young woman from my hometown. Uh, I was, I think I was probably in, I was in my second year in college or third year in college. And um, she was still in high school, but I knew her not very well. And she came up to me and said something like, I cannot believe the power of God in this on this retreat, I've never seen anything like it in my life. And I hadn't either. It was really profound. Here's another story. Oh, this is probably 15 years ago. Um, I was back at my um, in-law's house in West River. And one of the, uh, my wife's sisters came down with shingles. And I, I think she'd had it for a couple of days. She'd been really sick. I'm more tired than anything. So I said, why don't we lay hands on her? And so that seemed like a good idea. You know, why not? It couldn't hurt to pray. So my wife and I at the time laid hands on uh, my wife's sister. And then she went and took a nap because she was tired. Well, she woke up from her nap and she was healed. The shingles were completely gone. It was another crazy story. Here's one more. Just the other night on Pentecost, a few weeks ago, we had a Pentecost party at our house. Um, And so we did a little bit of praise and worship, not much, after dinner. And I said, does anyone want prayer? So we just started praying over people. And what does that even look like? Um, it's really simple. Somebody sits down in a chair. Um, the other people gather around them and maybe lay a hand on their shoulder. And we just ask the Spirit of God to move. We bring Jesus, Holy Spirit, into um, the prayer. And He does the moving. We just do the praying. Because you might watch this video and say, oh my gosh, Glenn, you're a healer. No, I just pray with people. And um, uh, I've been in the healing ministry For many, many years, but um, I've probably witnessed, I don't know how many, so many miracles, but no, anyone can do this. Anyone can pray. So we, um, we laid hands on this gentleman, um, my age, he was having problems with his knee. Um, So we laid hands on his knee and immediately I said, um, after we finished the prayer, how is your knee? This is pretty good. Well, I saw him the next day and he said, I cannot believe how good my knee feels. I've been hopping and jumping on it, you know, uh, throughout the day. And I I just can't believe the pain is gone because this has been terrible. Another physical healing. Why does God heal people? Now you've heard four, five, six stories. There's plenty more that I could talk about in that realm of healing or other stories. And maybe I'll do that another time, but why does God heal people? It's one of the ways he communicates that he loves us and that he's alive. Uh, Maybe even a bigger reason or as big is he's trying to get to our hearts to heal our hearts. Because if there's one thing God is trying to do, he's trying to get us in right relationship with him so we can receive his love and grow and be with him for eternity. Don't overlook the fact that um, the evil one comes to kill, steal, and destroy, like I talked about in the last podcast. And that's what he's trying to do. But God's Holy Spirit, he comes to bring us life and life everlasting. And these experiences that I've had in the last 30 years are as old as the Catholic Church. It goes all the way back to the time of Christ. And throughout the centuries, God's Spirit would mix and stir up and uh, this happened again in 1967 some college students on the feast I believe the feast of Pentecost I might have that wrong but some college students were gathering and and asking the Holy Spirit to pour himself on 
the students on this retreat. Well, guess what happened? Um, he did. The Spirit of God moved and fell on um, this retreat weekend. And they started having some of these same experiences I've been talking about. So this isn't anything new. It's actually as old as the church. Some of you say, well, I've been Catholic my whole life, and I haven't experienced or seen anything like that. And I would say, well, so what? I was Catholic for 19 years before I saw something like that. Um, it doesn't mean that God isn't moving. So how do you tap into the power of the Holy Spirit? I founded Mission Blueprint with my wife because we have noticed so many Catholics and Christians, other non-denomination Christians, um, living for themselves. And it's a type of slavery. So the first key to experiencing God's Holy Spirit is surrender. Surrendering your entire life to the person of Jesus Christ. God wants you to give everything to him. I mean, all of it. Yes, your money. Yes, yes, your possessions. Yes, your children, your parents, everything, your vocation, everything. So surrender really is the key here. And when we surrender, we say three things for sure that, that we mean. Lord, I will go wherever you want me to go. I will say whatever you want me to say, and I will do whatever you want me to do. See, it's a full surrender of oneself to the person of Christ. I did that in 1990. But surrender is not enough because when you surrender, God then wants to pour out your Holy Spirit. Some of you may be waiting for your confirmation to be activated. Well, the bishop activated, but you still control the switch. I think that's a decent metaphor. If you want to use a keg of beer, uh, the keg is tapped, but you you got to you got to pour. And that's the next thing to receive the Holy Spirit, to allow the Holy Spirit permission to move in your heart. And when you do those two things, I can guarantee you, if you really do them, now what I mean by surrender, you don't kind of give God everything. No, you go all in. When you do these things, God will move. He always does. Some of you may even feel him, although that's not necessary, but you might feel him. You might feel arms wrap around you at some point. I don't know how he's going to work in your life. All I know is how he how he has worked in my life. And I got to tell you, it's an amazing love. It really is. Here's a prayer that has been with me for a while. And it goes like this. Please feel free to pray this. And I'll put this in the link on YouTube. Come Holy Spirit. Fill the hearts of your faithful and enkindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your spirit and they shall be created and you shall renew the face of the earth. O God, who by the light of the Holy Spirit did instruct the hearts of the faithful, grant that by the same Holy Spirit we may be truly wise and ever enjoy his consolations through Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, hey, thanks for listening. May God strengthen the bars of your gates. God bless you. Hey, thanks for listening to the Glengower Podcast, sponsored by Mission Blueprint. Mission Blueprint is a nonprofit ministry started by Glenn and Jamie to sanctify the family. Our income is donation-based, and we need your help. Please support us financially by going to www.mission-blueprint.org and be a part of our financial team. Thank you, and may God strengthen the bars of your gate.